You're watching KFDX3 News Today. Aaron Frank, KFDX3 News, the spirit of Texoma. Two in Vernon and two in Quanta. If they are needed, the DPS will make that call. They'll call these guys out to come help out any stranded motorist. We're still off I-44, just a little bit north of the Missile Road exit, but a road that was already covered in ice, Steve, is now getting a layer of snow on top of that, making conditions even worse. Now, one of the hot topics today, of course, is going to be about weight loss. Now, Steve, I want to kind of show you an interesting visual. I don't know if you'll want to see it or not, but to put things into perspective, to lose a pound of fat, this is how much you would have to lose. Now, a lot of people want to lose more than one pound. This would be five pounds Ooh. of fat. As I mentioned, Michelle Aguilar, she lost 120 pounds. So really puts it into perspective. And you don't have a display for that for us? 120 I don't pounds think you, you would want it. I don't think I could lift it. This is heavy enough. <laughs> Good morning to you and welcome to KFDX 3 News Today. I'm Erin Schrock with Steve Nielsen and Brian Rupp. We hope you're having a great Thursday morning so far. We are watching the areas of Altus, yes. watching Quanta because they're getting quite a bit of rainfall right now. Yeah. Time to check in with Brian at the weather wall. Brian, for once, we're not the ones talking about summer scorching temperatures. It's those on the East Coast today. And although the 4th of July holiday was a little bit soggy for some Texomans, according to area firefighters, the rain was a good thing. All of the gates will be locked down starting at 9 o'clock this morning, and they will remain closed until about 11 or 12 or until this exercise is complete. George Woodward has been kind enough to join us this morning and answer some questions for us. So, George, we understand this is to get you prepared, but also to get other people in the community ready. Fixing a situation like this with asphalt used to be what they would call the cheap fix rather than using concrete. But at this time last year, one ton of hot mix cost $48. This year, one ton, $70. That's more than a 30% increase. They have no idea when the power will be restored, but here at the shelter, they're prepared to offer help to anyone who needs it. This annual activity, and it's pretty easy to see why. There's a lot of fun here today. Now, some of the seniors right now are participating in a good old fashioned cakewalk. They're getting into it, and I tell you what, they're a little bit competitive when it comes to the cakewalk. I've seen a, a little bit of pushing, of course, all in friendly competition. You done way better than last year's crop. In 30 years of running grain elevators in Vernon and Harold, Bob Ferguson's seen good crops, bad crops, and everything in between. But he's never seen this. We're in big trouble, and I think the whole farming industry in, in North Texas, the wheat industry, is in it's, it's in trouble. Ferguson purchases wheat from local farmers and then sells and ships the product to three major worldwide grain buyers in the Gulf, but this year they're not buying. They're demanding a 12% protein, and most of the wheat raised here this year is 11 and a half or maybe 11.2 or 3. So that leaves Ferguson with a big problem. 110 cars of wheat, almost 400,000 bushels on a train headed nowhere. We have never experienced in any crop in my lifetime in ag, we've never experienced the game changing during harvest. Representative Hardcastle says his office first heard about the problem on Friday night. Since then, he's been in contact with the Department of Ag and the Ag Commissioner, but he says there's no easy solution. It is a free market issue, which will be hard to, to go in front of, but at the same time, none of our farm service agencies were prepared. Uh, certainly, the grain elevators weren't prepared, which means the farmers weren't prepared. The price is just going down every day. I mean, there's not very many elevators right now that's going to be able to ship wheat. So the stockpiles of wheat keep building up, and, and we're really the first stage of wheat harvest in the, the wheat belt here. And Ferguson says in a few weeks they may accept his wheat, but selling them will come at a big price. Oh, they could offer 75 cents under the market. I mean, they could do that today, and probably I'm going to have to look at the situation and say, do I take that or wait? And the railroad's going to start charging me to merge on the char cars sitting there that I've already loaded. Both Ferguson and Hardcastle say this is the beginning of a very long harvest. I've been here 30 years. This is a brand new ball game. This game changer, uh, the nominal effect will be massive. 